quick side note before we get into today's patch ready topic, but yesterday we also spoke about Max Patch Ready as well as the day before that, but I wanted to give a little bit of a follow up to yesterday's video because the weirdest thing happened with me yesterday. So, for every YouTube video that gets uploaded onto this channel, we always, for every single video, make a nice little tweet, tweet it out, add all the hashtags to get people on Twitter who might not have seen the videos at first, seeing the videos after, and we just go about our day. And for the most part, most of these updates are just that. They're just updates. They don't really get traction. Nobody really likes them. Nobody replies to them. Nobody retweets them. People just click on them because the videos are there. But yesterday with the Max Pacioretty thing, we had somewhat of a viral tweet situation go on where some popular insiders and analysts were replying to it, and yeah, people were kind of harping on the tweet itself. It's actually not the first time it happened. Last time this happened, it was about the Patrick Kane, Cole Caulfield, Jesperi Kotkaniemi thing, and that was kind of funny because that wasn't even my idea. That was an idea mentioned by George LaRock on the radio, and I unfortunately did not include that part in the tweet, which is why, if you take a look at it now, I got ratioed pretty hard, and uh, yeah, people were just calling me out in the replies, calling for my head, so to speak, even though I wasn't really the one who was there saying it should happen. If you actually watched the video, you know, you would have seen I was saying no too, but regardless, the last video on Patch Already kind of got that reaction as well, so I thought I would share that little tidbit. Sorry if you very much disapprove of me talking about whatever it is I want to talk about at the start of my own YouTube videos, but we have ourselves the third straight video on Max Patch Already here today, and it's a very weird one, because... Oh man, I didn't even really think this team would actually get involved. Let's go over onto Pittsburgh Hockey Now. If you know what we're talking about here, Pittsburgh Hockey Now is a subdivision of the Hockey Now websites. There's a Hockey Now for Boston. There's a Colorado Hockey Now. There are different Hockey Nows where they go over different articles and trade rumors and topics and discussion points for different NHL teams. Pittsburgh Hockey Now obviously focuses on the Penguins. And if you go over to their most recent article written by Dan Konjerski yesterday, Take a look at this. NHL trade talks are picking up, and the Penguins are circling back on Max Pacioretty. Oh my gosh. Take a look at this over here. The article, for its credit, starts off by talking about how you shouldn't get too excited about Penguins trade talks just yet, because GMs are starting over and they have a lot of preliminary conversations that they need to do. The chatter volume is high, but it's too early to call anything serious. There are also talks about compliance buyouts, etc., but that's a story for another day. But the big, juicy piece of the article comes around the halfway point. Let's take a look at this here together. Multiple sources have told Pittsburgh Hockey Now the Penguins are interested in a pair of big-name players who have big-time salaries. One of those names is VGK left wing Max Pacioretty. However, the article quickly backtracks, and it says that these talks probably could just be classified as exploratory, because the winger has three years remaining at 7 million AAV, and everything about the Penguins acquiring Patch Ready would be both impossible, economically speaking, and in terms of the lineup. As an expensive and offensively productive left wing, Patch Ready is a top six winger, and the Penguins are full on the left side. Which is why the article then ignites the spark of hope once again by saying it does make sense for Rutherford, at the very least, to be poking around. The Penguins made the initial call and are waiting to see how the situation evolves. So, from these paragraphs, you can kind of gather how exactly the Penguins are exploring this trade idea. Mostly, it appears that they've been calling up the Golden Knights and asking about that patch already. Not because they think they're going to get him, but because they're just poking around, you know, asking about it and wanting to see if the price would align, etc. Because from this, it appears that the Penguins legitimately would like to have him. I mean, that's kind of why we're checking in on him, right? There's no reason to check on a guy that you wouldn't want. But as it says here in the article, it does kind of not make sense. At first glance, when you take a look at how the Penguins are structured cap-wise, how they're structured line-wise, and how exactly this would go down, because Pacioretty is making $7 million for three more years. Right now, the Penguins have about $1.3 million in cap space, and they're going to have to use that cap space to re-sign a few guys. Cody Ceci's in there, Teddy Bluger's in there, the big fish, though, it's John Marino. This guy's 23 years old, he's making 925 on the AAV, and he's gonna get a paycheck. Marino's a very good 
NHL caliber defenseman straight out of the system. And who knows if the Penguins are out there freeing up what would be a Cody CC salary or they don't re-sign Colton Seaver or something and they actually put the money towards a John Marino, but at the end of the day, you know, Max Patch already getting added to the mix, yeah, that's kind of whack. Zach Aston Reese needs a contract too, he's on the IR, but he does expire next season as well. And then if you go over to the Pittsburgh Penguins line combination, because there are indeed a few other things to take a look at when it comes to the lines, you kind of see that Patch already doesn't really fit. You take a look at the top nine of what Pittsburgh has right now, and you see the usual names that are in there. It's Crosby, it's Malcolm, and it's Jankowski there on the third line center spot. But then you have Jake Gensel, pretty good player. Jason Zucker, very good player. Then Jared McCann, who has had his time establishing himself in the NHL as a legit player. And then on the right wings, you have some pretty good players too. Kapanen, we know he's going to be on the first line because it was revealed that that was the case. Brian Rust, Brandon Tanev, legit NHL players too. The fourth line, you could say it needs some work, whatever. Rodriguez, Bluger, Colton Skeever. But... Where's the room for Pacioretty? Unless you're going out here and playing Jared McCann back at center and having Max Pacioretty as your third line left wing, then, ooh, man, that certainly is a big idea for sure. It's just, you know, Jankowski, that's just a name that's in there for the sake of being in there. Who knows if you're going to trade away a Max Pacioretty. We already spoke about this in the previous video, but if you're trading away Max Pacioretty, you're going to lose. Straight up. He was the best player on the Vegas Golden Knights last season in terms of point production. He's a very good player still, even though he's already 32. And when you're taking a look at a guy who's making $7 million for three years, you're going to lose that trade, plain and simple. But... According to what was an interview done with the Vegas Golden Knights owner, Bill Foley, he actually came out here and said himself that they are not shopping Pacioretty. Here's the interview. TSN up in Canada had the story that the Golden Knights are trying to free up some cap space or they're shopping Max Pacioretty. The owner responds, we are not shopping patches. But we are trying to free up some cap space because we do have cap issues. And so some of those things have to be resolved. As we go forward, we started getting into the season, but he definitely has nothing to shop. That doesn't make any sense. I'm surprised I'm reading it verbatim. But you kind of get the idea here. The owner comes out. He says, no, we're not shopping patch already. But as we noted in literally like the previous week, just because they're owners doesn't mean they're telling the truth 110% of the time. We saw this with Eugene Melnick a few days ago where he came out and he said, yeah, man, our plan was to trade away all the top six players on the Ottawa Senators, and we did it. I lied to the media about how we were not going to do it, but we did it anyway because that was the secret plan we had behind the scenes. So, you know, just because an owner says something doesn't mean it should be taken as 100% fact, but the fact is when you have an owner coming out and saying something, you have no choice but to at least consider that as being the truth. So, who knows? Max Pacioretty on the block, off the block, whatever. Greg Wasinski said the same thing, that he heard that Pacioretty was indeed not being on the trade block, even though Frank Saravelli came back out here and said, yeah, no, the report was that he's being shopped, which is what's happening, which indeed is true. And then you had Pittsburgh Hockey now coming out here saying, yep, the Penguins are involved in Pacioretty. They've been asking about him and they want him. So... Yeah, I'm kind of surprised as to how this thing has gone on. Three straight days talking about Pacioretty. Can you believe that? I'd be so surprised if people actually go out there and click on this one because the last video was a hypothetical situation. The previous one before that was the main Vegas Golden Knights trade situation. But now this one, it's the fact that another team has come in here and actually been a part of these conversations. So... Talk to me in the comments what you think about Max Pacioretty. Obviously, the cap doesn't work. Obviously, the lineup and the Pittsburgh Penguins' overall roster situation at the moment, it doesn't work. But what do you think about it? Like, what exactly do you need to do to get something like this to work? You're going to have to move out money to get a Pacioretty in. So who knows if you're out there, you're trading away a few players, or you're using this as fuel to get another trade in the works as well, if you're Rutherford, but... It's just going to be weird trying to crack this top nine, man. Gensel, Crosby, Kapanen, Zucker, Malkin, Rust, McCann, Jankowski, Tanev. Obviously, Jankowski is, by reputation, the worst quote-unquote player in the top nine. And Jared McCann can play center too, but, you know, you can't just swap out a patch ready for a Jankowski and expect everything to be good. You have to do other moves to make everything work around that. So, 
I don't know. It's just me spitting off here. But talk to me in the comments what you think. If you're a Vegas fan, what would you like from Pittsburgh going back here? This isn't even the first time we've spoken about Vegas and Pittsburgh. We spoke about Marc-Andre Fleury maybe going back to Pittsburgh as well a few months ago. So talk to me in the comments what you think about all this stuff. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye. <laughs>